What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video on Ready or Not. Today we are going to be breaking down the demo that I played at DreamHack. I talk a little bit about the interview that I did because a lot of you guys were actually asking for my impressions. So this is going to be that video. So the first thing that I want to say before I really get into it is that I probably wouldn't have gone to this convention because each ticket is $50. Yikes. Were it not for the Ready or Not booth and my amazing patrons, also it being in the general area where I was, and it's not under NDA, I probably wouldn't have gone but because i think ron is something special i decided to go so the booth that the devs had was pretty small like there was just a table and four chairs they were featuring a more updated version of the alpha that supporters are going to eventually get it was a gimped version that only had one game mode and on one map the training map i believe tug of war to be exact and if anybody's ever actually played tug of war the game mode is basically like that the bar at the top of the screen is the rope and the slider in the middle is the flag that would be on the rope the way that you move said flag is by only Owning the contested area on the map, which on the map that I'm playing on is on the third floor of the building that's in the middle, I believe. Yeah. Of course, this game is inspired by Swap 4, so there is also a second way that you could win instantly by simply going in with less than lethal weapons and handcuffing every single team player, ending the round immediately. Of course, that's not an easy task to do, but I mean, if you're just that good. And yes, you can cut your buddies free if they get handcuffed. And one thing that I noticed is that in this version of someone getting cuffed, the person that's cuffed can actually move around but he like moves like ridiculously slow and the enemy team can actually kill you while you're cuffed which wasn't a thing too long ago but yeah so cuff the entire team or try to control the area that gives you all the points so that you can take the flag to your side of the bar and the game mode itself usually features like 8v8 but because their booth was so tiny they had to settle with 2v2 probably for the best anyway because i'm sure 8v8 hasn't been optimized just yet so if you're wondering why i was running around a lot it's mainly because i wanted to get into the action because it was a big map a lot of people were saying that the gameplay looked really arcadey and that's because i was just trying to run around and look for players because there was only 2v2 and the map that we were playing on was a big map so i generally don't run like that every time because usually it's a 5v5 map or 8v8 i forget so my gameplay really wasn't the best representation of ready or not i also saw that people were criticizing the reload that's mostly my fault because the game features regular reload fast reload and the mechanic where you can actually check to see how much ammo you have left in the mag and i did use all of them in the gameplay but the most that i was using was the fast reload so it made the game look like an arcade game see the thing about doing a fast reload is that he drops the mag on the floor and for the most part of the recording i do a whole lot of fast reloading by double tapping r but here and there you'll see pockets of the regular reload which you'll get if you tap r once and me checking my ammo which you'll get if you hold down r and you're very limited on how many mags you can carry and anytime that i reloaded i never looked down to actually pick up the mag so anytime that i reloaded i was losing mags i think i only had like six mags that's the drawback of trying to do a fast reload you keep losing mags again this game mode is usually like 5v5 but because it was 2v2 i think i got away with just dropping the mags every time that i reloaded because it was 2v2 i think that there was only like one time where i actually had to switch to my sidearm yeah i was up on the third floor I was like, oh crap, I ran out of ammo. So I switched over to my uh, uh, sidearm, the 1911, my favorite pistol to hopefully get one day. And I was actually surprised at how effective the sidearm was. But uh, yeah, moral of the story, if you're going to do fast reload, it comes at a price. You'll drop your mag and you have to pick it up or you won't have any ammo. So I hope that that clears up the whole game kind of looks arcadey thing. The game itself looks like really good. I wouldn't say that it looks gorgeous or anything like that. Like it looks more like it's gritty, down to earth, realistic maybe like my only issue is that sometimes it's hard to tell who's a teammate and who's not but i think that if you play it enough eventually you'll figure it out but like the guns in the hands remind me a lot of modern warfare 2 and 3 especially when you're holding a scar that's one thing that i've always said about the previews that they had on their website it almost looks like modern warfare like the old ones that's honestly how i thought the game was going to feel but it turns out that the game is far more tactical than it's letting on for instance the game does not feature a prone mechanic so it's substitute substitutes that with a leaning system so if you hold down alt and then press wasd he does like a lot of leanings and if you're crouching he gets even lower than that it's actually really cool watching other players using the mechanic but uh yeah i think i was the only one that really knew about it at the convention because you know i own the alpha and i've been following this game like forever so yeah there was also a weight system and like i've never actually felt it until now because this was actually the first time where i put on a lot of gear and my guy started actually walking because he had too much weight on him i completely 
forgot that that was a mechanic in the game and i was asking the developer like yo why is my character walking like i thought this was a glitch or something but the developer is like oh well you have too much weight on you and i'm like oh you guys finally added that in cool it's a mechanic that was from swap 4 for those of you that don't know where if you put too much gear on your guy gets weighed down because he has so much gear on so you have to bring less mags or go lightweight you know that sort of thing like you have to manage your gear basically if you want to move faster so yeah that mechanic is there the only thing i didn't test was um like if i went in like completely naked just with the pistol like would i be able to run like a maniac because that's how it was in swap 4 if you took off all your gear and just went in with the pistol it's like you sped up the game it's pretty funny but anyways yeah another mechanic that they had i don't think it was actually implemented but the ui was there for it so when you get hit there's like a little caricature at the bottom left i think it is you'll see like a body part light up in red but i don't think that actually does anything at the moment because i don't think they actually implemented the limping system you know the the system where if you get hit in your arms your gun begins to shake and all that stuff because i didn't feel that at all when i got hit like the most that i felt was just moving slowly but it didn't feel like a limp to me so i i don't think that they fully implemented that system just yet i have a feeling that it's going to come with the gore system but i don't know it could be wrong so i want to mention that there is a mechanic where you can actually go full auto or semi-auto or even put the gun on safety also they have a lot of grenades in the game they have nine banks flash bangs stun grenades cs gas etc and uh, when it actually hits you your character model he puts his gun down and he puts his other hand and tries to like wipe off the stuff on his face so that he can see again and when you're stunned like this the enemy team can come in and actually handcuff you but if they don't handcuff you then you'll eventually just go back to normal essentially there's also ways to prevent this by bringing in like a gas mask or a face mask depending on the situation but yeah i just wanted to mention that because there are ways to prevent certain less than lethals and certain grenades from actually affecting you how did the game feel i think that ready or not nails it the controls are just very responsive to everything that i tried to do and the movement feels great the only thing is the guns themselves like it kind of depends on what gun that you have like the m14 seemed to have a lot of kick any weapon that i could actually put a vertical grip on seemed to have a lot less kick which makes sense anything with the grip on it usually was more manageable anything without generally had more kick and uh yeah the game features a wide variety of sights and attachments that i don't know if i'm at liberty to say all of them but if i remember to show them on the screen i'll show them on the screen from the event one thing that i want to mention is that with the sights you press right click to aim and then you hold shift to aim even further in it's a cool little feature that i usually do whenever i'm like stuck in one area or shooting from far distance it's basically the mechanic from squad and postscriptum is, is what it kind of felt like just thought i'd mention that so in tug of war you're able to basically take any weapon that you want and edit it however you want and that's pretty much the, what i was doing most of the time just trying to get a bunch of guns in the gameplay as i could so how i knew that this version of ready or not is different from the one that we have in the alpha is because i have played tug of war and i have played this map but i haven't played on tug of war on this map in particular so this is a different version that we have yet to see and also another giveaway is the new uh radio menu that actually looks a lot more cleaner than the one that they had before which i actually like the way that that looks and actually feels when i think about it there are two teams just the swat and the paramilitary force as far as i can tell the swat have two different uniforms there's fbi skin and the regular swat skin but i believe the only people that are going to get the fbi skin is the people who bought the supporter edition so if you didn't buy the supporter edition then damn you missed out i have no idea if they're actually going to release that skin anytime soon and yeah i certainly enjoyed the four hours that i was at that booth not only playing with the developers but also playing with a couple of other people in the crowd it's pretty neat can't wait until i play and talk more about it when june comes around and see what other people think but yeah the gameplay that was at dreamhack was pretty solid in my opinion so let's talk a little bit about the interview i think a lot of the stuff that he basically told me was majority of the stuff i've already heard before but i have a tiny channel and not a lot of people watch it so they don't always see the information that i'm putting out so i'm basically forced to relive everything like it's groundhog day just to tell people the same information over and over again so if you want to hear the full version of the interview i'll just have it linked at the top right but for now i'm just going to be talking about things that i thought were interesting so let's go ahead and get into that you know me playing the alpha i had always wondered if they had a better version of it and he kind of confirmed it in the interview when he said that the version that i was playing at the event was running alongside the alpha that i've been playing for a while now so he basically confirmed what i was thinking at some point can't say for sure if this was a dev build or not i don't think it was but yeah then he talked about the ai animations and he basically said that those are coming along great and that they were spending a whole lot of hours on it and how they were going to add new animations to not only the player but also the ais themselves then we got to talk a little bit about gore and i think i remember watching a dead space video where they were showing how they were making gore and it's like wow that is a huge process and i don't imagine us actually seeing any gore in the beta to be honest i would see it more coming out towards the end of release at least 
least in my opinion. I'm not saying that is a fact, but I'm saying that gore is going to take a while because that's not an easy thing to do. And even if it does come out, it's not going to be as in depth as a lot of people think, or maybe it is. Who knows? The devs have uh, surprised me before, but they have said in the past that they're not going to make it like your head is going to be completely blown off and stuff like that. But we'll see. We'll see. I talked a little bit about voice actors, and they said that they really want to work on the game before they decide to put more voices in, which okay. But I mean, if they, you know, they need a voice actor, I'm right here. <laughs> then he said that the campaign was going to be around six to eight hours, which I mean, sounds pretty short, but I mean, if there's multiple ways that you can go through a mission and every mission is not going to be the same as, you know, the previous one, because they're going to have AI set in different areas and doing different things. It's obviously going to be replayable. So those hours are going to be stretched a lot more. And you can also experience it in the co-op mode with a friend to see if it's any different. But yeah, moving on, you talked about um, how customization is basically based on points. I think the best example of it is probably Insurgency Sandstorms, just so you can't take everything. He kind of went in depth on it. So he said that it's basically like a balancing issue at the moment. They say that they're not happy about it right now. So they're really going to, you know, get more into it as development goes. After that, we talk about their development team and they say that they're always looking for new programmers. So, I mean, if you're a programmer, you can all go, I'll go. And they say that regardless of positive or negative feedback, it's always helpful to them. Then we talked a little bit about traps. The player isn't going to be using traps. He's just going to be, you know, looking for traps just to try and not run over one. Traps are most likely going to be featured in the co-op and not really the multiplayer. I also learned that they started out as modders, which seems to be a trend with developers. But yeah, they said that they're really going to be working on a lot of sounds and that they have a sound guy doing everything basically. And if anybody's ever heard the soundtrack, I believe that's the same guy. I think he's doing a great job so far. Talked a little about cutscenes and he said that there's not going to be too many in the game. They said that they would make more, but you know, they're a tiny studio. Then I asked about the school level and he said that they were willing to do it. They're saying that the school level is actually going to be story driven. So they don't want to release too much information on that. I asked about the maps and he said that they're going to have quite a few around 10 ish. But a lot of those maps are going to be reused for multiplayer, but like made in a way so that it's, you know, more balanced. So it's going to be like the same area, but just a different looking map, basically. That makes sense. Talked a little bit about character customization uh, when it comes to like cosmetics on the player. And they said that they're not going to go too in depth with that at the moment. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything that we talked about. All the main stuff anyway. If you want to listen to the full thing, it'll be up at the top right. And uh, yeah, that pretty much covers it. If you like the fact that I cover Ready or Not, be sure to like, share, comment. And if you're new, subscribe and ding the bell. If you're someone that would like to support my channel, be sure to check out my Patreon. Just donate two bucks a month. That's all I really asked for. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.